Today we're going to do some plant propagation again. Welcome to my backyard and my infamous fig tree. It makes very large big figs, uh, somewhat similar to the ones they use for uh, fig newtons. And first of all, I'm going to tell you what you need to do the process called air layering. Air layering is where we will select a branch on the tree and we will force it to make roots and then we'll cut that branch off later and we'll have an exact clone or a small tree which will have the same genetic material as the parent. The first thing you will need is a container, and this is a rather large container. What I've got here is a uh, Lysol wipes container that I have split down the center, made a large hole by heating up a screwdriver with a propane torch and kind of wallowing that out. I've done that on both ends. I've also taken the lid and split it so I can completely fit this over a limb. The next thing you'll need is a mixture of potting soil and also some sphagnum moss, which I have here, and any potting soil will do as long as it's nice and wet and moist. Need some rooting hormone. It can either be liquid or powder. Again, a utility knife, which will show how we're going to uh, cut part of the plant in just a minute to start the root uh, growth. We'll need either some clear tape and some duct tape and also a nice little paintbrush for application of the rooting hormone. And last but not least, some aluminum foil to cover the entirety of this container for it to uh, essentially resemble being in the ground for a, period of, for a period of time. So this will take about two to three months for roots to form. After doing an air layer is selecting, of course, the limb that you want to, again, become the next major tree. And then, with a sharp utility knife or some type of blade, we're going to make a, a circular cut. We're going to go all the way around the bark, come all the way around, and cut it. And we're going to make a similar cut about an inch away. We're going to come around this, trying to not cut yourself in the activity while you're taking this off. Make sure you cut down here. I'm going to split this and then I'm going to remove a portion of this outer bark and leave the exposed cambium. Let's put this on around. So I have what appears to be a portion of the wood, which is the cambium layer, the slick layer underneath. Again, there's two vascular tissues in. Uh, plant tissues, phloem and xylem, and I've essentially taken away the phloem tissue and I'm going to leave the xylem because it is going to continue to feed the leaves that we have here. Okay. The second phase will be to take some rooting hormone and apply a generous amount around the actual bark that we have taken off. Okay. So this is going to help stimulate root growth at this point. Now, we're going to take our container and we're going to slip it over this particular portion of the limb that we have made the cut in. And I will come back around and I'll put the front on this, which is the lid, open this. And I will leave this open to this point. Now we're going to fill this container with some potting soil, which is our mixture of sphagnum moss and peat moss. And we will fill this completely. It takes just a minute to do this. Again, it's nice and wet. Not totally soggy, but very wet. Press this in, pushing it all the way down, filling the container, and turning that just a bit on its side so it will rest and hold for just a minute while I pack more of this material in. Okay. And fill this. As we say, fill it to the brim. And we're doing that, pressing it all around that new cut that we've made. 
so we'll be able to get a nice contact of peat and sphagnum with that cut area and the rooting hormone that we've placed on that cut area. Okay, at this point, we're going to bring our lid in and we're going to snap it onto our container, just like so. Okay, we've got a full container, peat moss. Again, we've got our cut. We've got this where it's pretty much sealed in. Now, there we go. Nothing ever goes perfectly the first time. We have to work with it just a bit. Okay. At this point, we'll kind of wipe this off, and now we're going to apply some tape, and we're going to seal this unit. So, with some duct tape, we're going to take a piece of this, and we're going to run it down the top of this, seal this off. Close it. Also, we're going to take a little more and make sure we seal the perimeter here. And I'm going to press this other one in a little bit more because I see my seal is not exactly closed on the bottom. Okay, now we're good. Run this over the top, down. Okay. Sealing this up crucial because you want to maintain the moisture inside this layered area and I'm going to also wrap a piece of tape around the entrance and the exit of the stem itself to hold that moisture in place in there. It doesn't have to really be pretty, it just has to block the moisture loss. And we're not finished with all of this yet as far as the enclosure and the encapsulation. I'm going to do the same thing on the back. Another piece of uh, duct tape. Duct tape, oh my goodness, what would we do without it? So many uses, so many things. Duct tape keeps the world in place. Okay, we're going to come around the back side of this. Take this in place, press it down. Okay. To finalize this whole application, we're going to wrap up this whole unit with some aluminum foil. And we're going to take some aluminum foil and we're going to go around it. Take it up the top, over. It's like you're putting together a turkey to put in the oven. Close that down real tight. Do the same thing in the back. We're going to close it down nice and tight. And again, this time we're going to apply some tape. But we're going to use some packing tape. And for that, let me take my hands out of my gloves just so I can maneuver this packing tape a little bit better. Cut this. Here's the tape. Nice wind is blowing out here today, which feels good. It's supposed to be. 95 or 96 today, and I'm out here in the middle of the sun filming any air layering process. Of course, when you're looking for this tape in, you never can find it. Pardon the airplane is passing over here. Thank goodness it's not a crop duster. Wrap this tightly and squeeze this down. Closed in. 
these in, I'm going to come back and I'm going to wrap another piece of duct tape. But I'm tightening all of this up with, again, some packing tape, which will hold this in place. Now, the process of root generation is not one that's immediate. This is going to go through the growing season this year. Today is the uh, first week in June, so this will be probably ready to take off in August, at least 60 days or so, because this is a continued, this whole limb is going to continue to grow and thrive through the summer. We've done nothing to upset the uh, water and mineral uh, transition. We've just disturbed the phloem, which is the plant juices, and it's going to, the rooting hormone is going to force the uh, growth of uh, roots at the point where we made the cuts. So I'm going to come back with this. Maybe we won't need another thing of duct tape. Pack this around. Just trying to get good closure and get good seal on this, which it seems to be doing quite well. This is pretty much how you do an air layer. Uh, woody trees of any type, you can do this. And uh, as long as you're in a, a growing period and you've got good photosynthetic activity of your plant, everything is uh, working very well. Your plant should produce uh, adequate roots. You can use different containers. You can use uh, water bottles. Again, you have to make sure that you're able to bore holes and get the entire bottle around the stem itself. Uh, if you add a rooting hormone, you can either use a liquid or a powder. I use Rutone, which is a common over-the-counter uh, rooting hormone. But uh, any plant can be uh, air-layered, essentially woody plants, and you can produce a clone or an offset. Uh, at this point, I've done uh, three uh, air layers off of this tree so far, and both, uh, or all three, are successful as far as I can uh, as I can see in their owners. So with that, we'll say good afternoon, and uh, see you later from my backyard.